Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick video looking at the new content on graphs that's been added to the 0580 IGCSE syllabus. Uh, we've got this idea of sketching trigonometric, trigonometric functions, graphing the properties of trigonometric functions, solving trigonometric equations, and this idea of like sketching, interpreting graphs, um, things like linear, quadratic, cubic, and reciprocal. Okay, so. Um, the first sort of question they might just ask is something as uh, simple as drawing the graph. So draw y equals sine x, y equals cos x. Uh, here I've, I've put the domain between minus 360 and 360. I think it's unlikely that they're going to expect more than that one. Um, basically you just need to remember this shape. So for sine we're going through 0. Uh, we have a maximum at 90, back to 0 at 180. Minimum minus uh, 270, that goes down to minus 1, and then back to 0 at 360. If you don't remember it, remember you can just stick values onto your calculator. So I'd, I'd try, you know, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Your calculator is going to tell you what the values are. So this is what sine x looks like. That could be a possible question. Uh, equally for cos x, again, let's put the domain between minus 360 and 360. Uh, this time I'm going to start at 1, and then we go at 0 at 90, negative 1 at 180, 0 again at 270, and back to 1 at 360. So as before, if you can't remember it, stick some values in the calculator. So when x is 0, cos x is 1. Therefore, I know it starts at this point here. Uh, last one could be tan x. Uh, this is the one that's slightly more complicated. Um, it's going to look something like this. So we've basically got the asymptotes at... 90 to 70 minus 90 so that they're 180 degrees apart we go through 0 0 and we get this kind of asymptote kind of shape here where we never touch these asymptotes and we get this kind of uh, inflection kind of like this um, so there we go so that's what tan x looks like again stick some values in your calculator if you're not sure so that could be the first sort of question uh, here is an example of a question to do with understanding this idea. So they, they give us sine x, they say write down the coordinates of p. So I need to know that at p it's basically uh, the x coordinate is 180, uh, the y coordinate is 0. So there we go, so it's the coordinates 180, 0. The point q, equally I need to know that it's this. the x coordinate is 270 and the y coordinate is negative 1. Okay, and then let's actually look at some solving trig equations. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this. For positive values, as in if we're solving like sine x is a half, cos x is a half, tan x equals 1, you know, when these, these values here are positive, um, I would just recommend learning learning the rule. Okay, so for sine x, you should already know this one from, from the other trigonometry. Um, to find the second value for trig, uh, for sine, you do 180, take away the answer. So we, we, we already used that on for the finding the obtuse answer when we're using uh, the sine rule. So we do, for example, if sine x is a half, we use a calculator, get an answer of 30. Our second answer is 180, take away 30, which is 150. If you're not sure, you can check it. Sine 150, yeah, we get a half to stick on our calculator. And for cos, the rule is to do 360, take away the answer. So for example, cos x is a half, use my calculator, get 60. Second value is 360, take away that answer, which is 300. And then for tan x, uh, the, the rule is basically just add on 180. So for example, tan x is 1, use my calculator, get 45. Second answer is 180 plus 45 is 225. So if, if they're positive, I would just recommend just learning that, really. Um, probably makes life easier. So for example, uh, I saw solve sine x is 0.1. Stick it on my calculator, sine x is 0.1, therefore x, well, my first value is 5.7. Giving all my angles to one decimal place, like they want in the exam. Uh, the second answer, I use this rule, 180 take away 5.7, 174.3. If you want to actually see what's happening, there's the line for 0.1, there's y equals 0.1, there's a the graph of sine x. When do they intersect? This value here, this value here. You can see the first intersection is 5.7. So you can see that the distance travelled here is the same as the distance travelled here. So therefore, the second answer is 180 take away 5.7, 174.3. Uh, tan x equals 2. 
So yeah, I'll, I'll use my rule, uh, use my calculator, 63.4. That's my first solution. Second solution, 180 plus 63.4, so 243.4. Again, if you want to see what's happening uh, on the graph, there's a the line y equals 2. This is the graph of tan x. When do they intersect? Look, there's a the solution there at 63.4. The second solution, basically, we've got, we're just adding 180 every time for tan. So the period is 180. So the second solution, just add 180. 243.4. Okay, and the good aspect like this is like make, making it slightly more complicated. First of all, I, I, I need, just need to rearrange this so it actually looks like a normal equation. So 4 cos x is 3, therefore cos x is 3 quarters. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, use my calculator, I get one answer of 41.4. Second answer, because it's cos 360, take away 41.4, 318.6. Again, you want to have a look. There's the graph that so looks like this. There's the line y equals 3 quarters. There's the graph of cos x. When do they intersect? 41.4 and then 318.6. Again, the distance from there is the same as the distance from there. Okay, uh, this was actually given as the specimen example. Uh, we, we've got the graph of uh, cos x. And they say solve the equation 3 cos x equals 1. Okay, so I've rearranged it, cos x equals a third. There's my solution, 70.5. Second solution, 360, take away 70.5, 289.5. Okay, and again, graphically, that's what we're doing. There's the, there's the line, one third. There's the graph of cos x. Those are the places where they intersect. Okay, so that's relatively straightforward. Uh, for the negative values, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, I would recommend using this method for the negative values. Um, find the first value using your calculator, then actually use the, the symmetry of the graph. So when I talk about negative values, for example, sine x is negative a half, cos x is negative a half, something like that. So if I do sine x is negative, if I do inverse sine of negative half, actually for sine I get a negative answer. All you need to do for this one is just add 360, because sine has a period of 360, therefore we will find a solution by adding 360. So therefore the first solution is... 330. Okay, so that's my first solution. For cos, uh, I don't even have to do that. If I do inverse cos of negative a half, it finds me one of the solutions. Same again for tan. If I inverse tan for negative one, uh, well, this time, again, I'm going to have to use a little trick. I get negative 45. This time I add 180 because tan has a period of 180 and I find my first solution. So if you remember about the period, so sine has a period of 360, that's why I'm adding 360. Tan has a period of 180. That's why I'm adding 180. So we found one of the solutions. And then we're going to use the graph to find a second solution. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Solve the equation 5 sine x plus 1 equals 0. Step number 1, therefore sine x is negative a half. Oh, sorry, negative 1 over 5. So I've just rearranged this equation. Um, I use this little trick. Uh, I go, well, well, therefore, if I inverse sine this, I get x is negative 30. That's outside the domain that I want. So add 360. So I get one answer is three, 330. Okay, so I get one answer of being 330. You then actually look at where this is on the graph. So I've drawn the line negative one fifth. You can see where 330 is. You can see that that's the intersection point. You can see that that distance there is going to be the same as that distance there. So if that is a distance of 30, this is also going to be a distance of 30. So therefore, the second solution is 180 plus 30, which is 210. And if you're not sure, we can check, does it actually work? Does sine 210 equal negative one-fifth? Yes, it does. OK, uh, same again. Uh, for example, if I'm doing cos x is uh, negative 1 over root 2, or same as root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, uh, this time I just stick it on my calculator, inverse cos negative 1 over root 2, I get an answer of 135. Then again, I, I, I do a little sketch to see what this is going to look like. This is the graph of cos. Here's the line minus 1 over root 2. Where does it intersect? Well, I've, I've got this solution here for 135. I can see that this is my second solution. You can see from the symmetry of the graph, uh, I've added 45 on this side. So therefore, I'm going to take away 45 on this side. So therefore, the answer is 225. And again, check it, stick in cos 225. I should get minus 1 over root 2. 
Okay, uh, let's just look uh, one with tan, same sort of idea. Uh, step number one, I'll rearrange it. Tan x is negative 3 over 2. This time, uh, I can just add 180. So I get a negative answer by inverse tan. Add 180 to it, because that's the period of tan. I get 123.7. And then the easy one is, I can just keep on adding 180. I just keep finding more answers for tan. So add on 180 again, 303.7. Again, check it. Does it work? Again, if you want to see what that happens in graphically, there's the line, negative 3 over 2. There's the first solution. And then I added 180. And then there's going to be the second solution. Okay, and then just a, a couple of examples for, for maybe extensions. Like I said, because it's new to the syllabus, it's not entirely clear what they will ask on this, you know, how far they'll extend this. I mean, this is possible. Um, you you kind of need to know, if you're going to do this question, unless they kind of help you along the way, that sine, this means sine squared x, means basically sine x all squared. So this sine squared x here means sine x all squared. Uh, the, the trick on this one is to just... To make it into a quadratic, we'd say, look, u is sine x, therefore sine squared x is u squared, and then sine x is u. So basically this thing here is exactly the same as 2u squared minus 3u plus 1. Uh, and then I can just factorise it as a quadratic. So I factorise it 2u minus 1 and then u minus 1. So that factorises to give me this one. And then what are the solutions? Either u is a half or u equals 1. And then I remember, well, actually, u was sine x, so therefore sine x is a half, or sine x is 1. And now I've just got the regular sort of solving equation, you know, sine x is a half, sine x is 1. What are the solutions to this one? So now I just you know, inverse sine, I get an answer of 30. Second solution is 180, take away this answer, so 150. When is sine x 1? Actually, it's just one solution, x is 90. And you can see that from the graph here. So I get these three solutions. Okay, that's one possible extension. The other possible extension could be this one, uh, sine 2x is 0 0.5. Similar sort of idea. I'm going to go, well, actually, I'm just going to sign, I'm going to do sine of u equals 0 0.5, where u is 2x. I'm going to solve this thing here. Well, again, if I si solve sine u equals 0 0.5, same as the last one, inverse of sine of 0 0.5, I get 30. Second solution for sine is 150. So you write down u equals 30, u is 150. But remember that actually u is 2x, so therefore 2x is 30 or 2x is 150, therefore x is 15 or x is 75. So again, I mean, possible extensions, so we, we don't really know if they're going to go that complicated or not, but I think it's worth at least looking at those ones. Okay, uh, then uh, the last little thing to look at is going to be right, recognising different graphs. Uh, we've got the... Uh, linear graphs that look kind of like straight lines, y equals mx plus c. We've got the quadratic graphs with like positive x squared or with negative x squared. So they're going to be either facing this way around or upside down. These are kind of ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, we've got the exponential graphs. Um, they're either going to look like this or they're going to look like this, uh, depending on if the value of a is positive or negative. Uh, and then we've got the reciprocal graphs, so we've got the kind of the positive, if we've got this on top, or if the A is negative, it's going to kind of look like this. You don't necessarily just have to recognise the general trend, so we've got a general trend of exponential, general trend of the reciprocal. Reciprocal, we've got this kind of asymptote where something is not joined up. Okay, um, then we've also got cubic so the cubic graphs are going to look something like this. So we're either going to have the positive x cubed or the negative x cubed. This is actually the special case of x cubed. Okay, so we need to just kind of generally recognize those, those graphs there. Um, this is just like one quick question on this one. Um, so they've given us some different graphs and then they've said like identify which graph is which. Um, so let's just have a look. Let's just start by labeling which one's which. First off, this is linear. This is a quadratic. This is a quadratic. This is a reciprocal. This is linear. And then this is also reciprocal. So then we just decide which one fits which uh, label here. Now, this first one here, 1 minus x over 3, that's a linear graph. Okay, so they've, they've written it in a slightly different form, but we've got, you know, uh, some coefficient of x. This is minus a third. And then this is uh, the y-intercept, which is 1. Actually, we can see that this fits graph A, 
the gradient of this graph is 1 divided by 3, which is negative 1 third. So therefore, that's negative a third. The y-intercept is 1. Um, we can see that this is actually graph C, 2x squared, so it's a quadratic. We also know that when x is 0, y is 0 on this graph, and we can see that it passes through the point 0, 0. So that's that one. And then this one here, we've got a reciprocal graph. So we know that it's either going to be F or D. Again, maybe just check on a point on this one. For example, when X is 1, this is telling me Y is negative 4. So therefore, when X is 1, the graph is beneath the axis. Therefore, I know it's going to be D. Okay, so that's a quick example of just recognizing graphs.